a challenge before us. So I admire so much the people who've come together to work on this issue. I know that you will bring great insight to this discussion and also great urgency to it. I'm especially pleased that Senators Grassley and Landrieu will join us through the wonders of video conferencing technology uh, and to have the chance to talk to some of the leading national decision makers I think makes this a very special occasion. I know that many people in this room have spent a long time trying to make sure that every child has a safe chance to actually explore their own interests and to be integrated into the general community. I think one of the biggest challenges is how can we make sure that the programs, the designs, the laws that are created with all the good intention don't push in the wrong direction. Don't push against the integration of, of, of every child into the general community with everyone else. And that, I am sure, is a challenge that will guide your analysis and discussions here today. It gives me great pleasure to introduce to you Daniel Heipel, who is the director of Fostering Media Connections, one of the organizers of this event, along with the Child Advocacy Program here at Harvard Law School. This kind of partnership is the kind of initiative that we here at Harvard try to uh, engage, because none of the issues of the sort that you're talking about here today can ever be solved with just one group it's only through partnerships and people working together that we're going to make a difference. And I commend you for your work and your effort and wish you an engaging time. Daniel. Hi there. I'm Daniel Heipel. I'm the director of Fostering Media Connections. Thanks to everybody for coming out tonight uh, in this second iteration of our on the road to educational equality tour. I want to thank um, uh, Harvard Law School's Child Advocacy Program. I want to thank the Congressional Coalition on Adoption Institute. I want to thank Participant Media um, and the Waiting for Superman Social Action Campaign for all they've done to make this event great. Um, I want to also thank the Einhorn Family Charitable Trust for their support of this event, um, as well as the Stewart Foundation, which has been a big supporter of FMC for, for almost two years now. So thank you to all those um, all those organizations who have been instrumental in this. Um, this weekend, I stopped by a conference in which there was a man named Pat O'Brien from a group called You Gotta Believe. And uh, basically what that group does is they try to find permanent homes for teenage foster youth. And the reason why he does that is because he contends out of those 2% of Americans, 2% of Americans have been through the foster care system. And he went and looked at a bunch of different uh, he looked at a bunch of different studies from around the country and determined that about half of our homeless population has gone through the foster care system at one point or another. So understanding that, uh, we do understand that there's a bullseye to fighting these larger societal ills. And uh, a big part of that, what we've figured out as we've kind of gone forward, is that a place to start that conversation is really in the schools. So um, if you'll bear with me, I'm going to have to play with technology, which is not that easy for me. So please, I want to introduce a clip from the film Waiting for Superman, which kind of talks to us about exactly where our schools are at today. Thank you very much. Today, there's a crisis in America. It goes beyond health care, the economy, and national security. Look a little closer, even right down the street. The crisis that's at the heart of our country is in our schools. Out of 28 reporting developed countries, American students rank 20th in graduation rates. While we were once pioneers in public education, now we've fallen behind. The key to solving all of these problems rests on solving one thing first, 
education. And the stakes are higher than we think. Here is Ms. Robinson. She has 32 students in her class. These kids are the future of our country. But in order to reach their full potential, they need a great education. In America right now, a kid drops out of high school every 26 seconds. That's three by the end of this video, and 1.2 million a year. These dropouts are eight times more likely to go to prison, 50% less likely to vote, more likely to need social welfare assistance, not eligible for 90% of new jobs, are being paid 40 cents to the dollar earned by a college graduate, and continuing the cycle of poverty. This is a frightening picture, but it doesn't have to be. When we change the odds, here's what it looks like. like Miss Robinson help her students succeed. A solution is possible, and it doesn't just rest on her shoulders. Now that you know what's at stake, what will you do? Um. Well, we have to fix our schools, and we have to fix our schools for our kids in the foster care system. And uh, fixing uh, schools and improving the success of all students, including those of children in, in foster care, requires the help of um, some folks in high places. So if we could say hello to our friends in D.C., that would be wonderful. Coming through. Hello. Hello, Senator Landro. Hello. 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 <clears throat> Hello, Daniel. How are you? How are you guys doing? I'm doing Joining fine. Us doing fine. We're great. Um, Senator Landrew, I wanted to ask you a question. You're a nationally recognized advocate for building families through adoption. Uh, you believe that there is no such thing as unwanted children, just unfound families. And you're the co-chair of the Congressional Coalition on Adoption Institute, a bipartisan group that boasts 155 members and is, a co and is co chair of the Senate Caucus on Foster Youth. You are. Um, Senator Landrieu, you've worked with wo over 1,000 foster youth and have seen the immense difference education has on their success. What are your thoughts on how we can do more to promote educational success? Well, first of all, Daniel, let me thank you for your really extraordinary leadership and your passion to help reform the foster care system in America and taking your tremendous skills as a journalist and putting them to uh, excellent use, communicating this issue to a broad audience of Americans that can do something about it, and particularly with the class and audience that you're with today. And I want to thank the dean who gave a beautiful introduction to this program, and I want to thank Harvard uh, Law Center and, and Child Advocacy Center for helping to host this uh, important discussion. And I'm very pleased to be here with my uh, wonderful colleague and great partner, Senator Chuck Grassley. He and I have the great privilege of serving as chairs of the Foster, uh, uh, foster Child and Foster Care uh, Caucus in the Congress. And I also chair the Adoption Caucus with uh, Senator Inhofe from Oklahoma. So I do a uh, double work, and it takes all of us to uh, help uh, promote uh, good changes in this policy. Just a couple of uh, broad thoughts. Um, we do have a challenge in America for improving education across the board from preschool uh, through kindergarten, elementary school, secondary, and uh, higher education. But leaving that subject aside, because the challenges are great and the great opportunity is we're getting ready to reauthorize uh, the um, major uh, program at the federal level, the reauthorization of the Secondary uh, Education Act, uh, right now we're considering that. But Daniel, as you and others have pointed out for this specific program, our focus is really on the 2% of American children. Uh, one and a half percent actually that spend time in the foster care system who are special 
who would need our special care and consideration. And that's because not only has our foster care system failed to provide the kind of permanency for children who are either relinquished or abandoned by their birth parents, or are removed from the care of their birth parents because their parents are uh, harming them uh, in irreparable ways, and so the courts step in to find a new family for these children. We're really failing to do that in the sense that 25,000 of these children, quote, age out of our foster care system every year without a permanent family. So while we're seeing on one side more and more foster care children being adopted, which is wonderful, that number has doubled, if not tripled, in the last 10 years, I like to believe, because of the work that Senator Grassley and I are doing and so many partners around the country. The fact of the matter is the system that is spending about $8 billion a year is not managing to find homes or permanent homes or mentors or families for 25,000 kids that age out every year. And just to back up a few years for those kids, those 18-year-olds that are aging out, some of them, it will be shocking for kids at Harvard to hear this, but some of these kids have gone to 10 different high schools. Is there any question as to why they aren't successful? I mean, if you had to go to 10 different high schools, you probably wouldn't be at Harvard today. That is on top of some of these children having gone to five or six or seven elementary schools because every time they move their foster care family, their school placement usually changes. So one of the things that we're really intent on doing is not only trying to find better quality foster care parents, making that experience temporary the way the law says, you should either go back to your birth parents or forward to an adoptive family, but as we're working on those reforms, we really want to make sure that kids at least get to say in the school where they can be at least with their teachers and their families and friends. And right now, there's really no law mandating that. And it's one of the things that Senator Grassley and I are working on. So I know that's a long answer to a short question, but I'm glad I could give a little bit of background to the importance of not only finding the right family for every child in need, but trying to get them, you know, permanency for their schooling and their education while we're working on trying to find better quality foster parents and options for adoption for these, you know, wonderful children whose families are broken doesn't mean they are. Their families are dysfunctional in many cases. It doesn't mean that they're dysfunctional or broken. And as Chuck and I, Senator Grassley and I have seen, so many of these children have extraordinary potential. And it's our job to do everything we can to make the laws and programs work for them, you know, not against them. So thank you. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Senator. Um, Senator Grassley, um, my question to you, what are the issues? You're, you are the co-chair of the foster, the, the Senate caucus on foster youth. Um, what are the issues on the top of the caucus's agenda this year? And what have the member of your caucus been doing on this issue in particular, this educational issue? Well, first of all, thank you very much for uh, sponsoring this program to you and to Harvard as well. Uh, first of all, let me emphasize that from a political standpoint that this is a lot of bipartisan support, not just evidenced by Senator Landrieu and I working together, but most of the foster care issues in the Congress of the United States have been relatively non-controversial. Now, having said that, uh, you could legitimately ask, well, then why don't we get more done? Well, <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of education that has to go on. And you ask about the caucus that I uh, and Landrieu, uh, Senator Landrieu and I uh, chair. Uh, the purpose of it is to concentrate on aging out uh, problems that foster care kids have, but it also deals with the whole longevity of people being in foster care. What can you do so that they're better prepared when they do age out? Uh, and I think it's very important that uh, uh, the first step that we do this year is to monitor the implementation of the CONNECT Act that got passed a couple years ago. And uh, the importance of monitoring that is, uh, you know, to make sure that uh, congressional intent is followed, 
that the bureaucracy is carrying it out the way that we intended. And one of the basic initiatives there is to make sure that state education agencies and state child welfare agencies uh, are working together in the best interests of the foster uh, care kids. Uh, and from that standpoint, uh, what we, uh, one of the main purposes of the caucus is to give a voice, uh, a, pro a program and a platform uh, to people that are in foster care. Because I think uh, Senator Landrew and I learned early on that, that we really don't understand uh, we don't listen to the specific complaints of the people that are hurt, the people that are involved, the people that we want to help. And so one of the main purposes of the caucus is to make sure that we have a forum for those people to come and speak out and, uh, and hopefully get more of them speaking out uh, in hearings before the various committees of the House and Senate uh, that deal with foster care issues. One step further, I would like to go beyond just getting uh, uh, the uh, state education agencies and the child welfare agencies working together uh, to a greater extent, is to review the Court Improvement Act and see how it's being carried out and whether it's effectively uh, interacting the way it should with, uh, with the, uh, uh, the child welfare agency primarily but we would think that judges would be very much interested in making sure that there's continuity in education when they make decisions affecting kids. Uh, lastly, I would say that uh, we want to move forward with the issue of, of problems of, uh, of paying for kids staying uh, within the same school system so they aren't moved around as much as Senator Landrew just told you. Uh, because that continuity is very important. And then I'll stop by uh, just saying where Senator Landrieu uh, started and ended up because it's the same place I start ended up. We need uh, permanence for these kids. Now that comes mostly and best through adoption. But if short of adoption, uh, we gotta give people stability. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Grassley. Thank you, Senator Landrieu. I, I do really appreciate, we all appreciate the time you've taken to discuss these issues, and it, we, we know it will inform our conversation from here on out. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.